Hello, everyone. Well, first, I want to be sure when he said free beers, he's not within this room. I see a lot of people here. Uh, just to be clear, there's no beer here now. You should probably go out for it. Be well. <laughs> So, uh, my name is Mario Grotero, uh, I work at Bloomberg, and I'm here today to speak about data. Uh, I'm, I'm working in use automation, and I went through a lot of pain when working with time-sensitive applications in Python, and I just want to share my experience so you don't fall into the same pitfalls. The, the main takeaway uh, I want you to take from here is, if you are doing anything that is really time-sensitive, you'll see there are a lot of problems that can arise, so you really want to check and validate your assumptions. So, let's see if this works. Yeah. So the, first of all, something I really liked, and uh, I wanted to share, because this is not just about Python, this is about daytime in general. I had this, this moment, which is like the Pluto cave, where <coughs> you see the real world, and you see how complex daytime is. So the things like we, we, give, we gave measuring the time for granted, but if you think about it, it's the same problem as measuring distance. We can just use the meter to, to measure the things. But if you wouldn't have that, how, how would you be able to measure other things? So for time, it's especially complicated because uh, for meter, you can have something physical that can measure it. But for time, you, need, you just need a, a constant um, a, and a recurring event with as constant as possible, with, with a frequency as constant as, constant as possible. So what I mean is, if you, for example, wanted to, you can just measure the duration of the day or any other thing based on how long it takes to fill a bucket of, uh, with water. If you're able to fill uh, the bucket in a constant time. So you can say a day takes 100 times to 100 buckets to be filled, right? Um, lucky enough, we don't use buckets of water. We use the second. And I want to speak about some time standards, that, well, the one that are, we are still using. The first, talk, the first of all is the UT1. Uh, UT1 is uh, measures a second as a fraction of the day. The day in the sense of the time it takes for the Earth to do a full spin. And uh, this, is, this is great. It's great for civil times. And uh, now, before it was just uh, being based on, you know, when we see the, uh, on the, like the solar time. So whenever you see that the Earth has fall compared to the sun. Nowadays, we all, you are using position of stars and more complex things. Uh, as a curiosity, if you ever wonder why do we have 24 hours, it's because the Egyptians were, had a, a system based on 12, not a decimal one, because of the joints on the finger. You can read more about that. It's really cool. So uh, then we, we were looking for this recurring event, like with uh, as constant as possible frequency. We realized that make microwaving session Cell uh, session makes it electron oscillate at a very nearly constant frequency. Yet I, I read it; I couldn't memorize that sentence. And so we started to build atomic clocks, which are just using session. And uh, this is great. Uh, this is what's being used for astronomical times. This is what TIE standard stands for. It's like inter, uh, international astronomical time. It's really, really precise, and and it's actually so precise that the civil time in the Earth will deviate from it, which is clearly an issue. And to see how, how complex it is to, to compute it, all, all those many labs are, are at the moment engaged in, in getting this really precise uh, time, like time and measure of the second. But then UTC came. UTC is what you all want to use. It's, it's the savior. It comes with a lot of problems as well, but that's what everyone is using now. So this is a standard that measures the time uh, the same way that Thai does, so it's it's based on session clocks, and but so it doesn't deviate. What it does, it's it adds it it has support to add a leap second every so often. We we just had one in December. I don't know if you felt it. Your life was a second longer, and <laughs> so uh, just just by doing that, you you can measure the time with a really precise instrument, and you can keep. Uh, noon being the time where the sun is in the sky, in the, like in the top of the sky, but just adding the leap second. This comes with a lot of problems for us, for us so as developers, because now minutes can have up to 60, 61 seconds. Well, it, we'll see more about that. Uh, so UTC came as well with the, time, with the concept of time zones and UTC offsets. So a UTC offset is just uh, an amount of time you will subtract or add. Uh, from UTC to get your time. So the thing is like, whenever you speak, the problem is you, you never speak on the time on, on UTC, right? If you're in New York, you, have, you are five hours 
Yeah, minus five hours. So, no, five, oh, my plus four hours. Well, you can check it. The idea is, <laughs> the idea is you want 12 o'clock to be the time the sun is in the sky. So you will use uh, time zones. Sorry, of, uh, UTC offsets. And then there is the concept of time zones, which is there are as many as you see here, and there are all kind of weird time zones, like some countries being um, hours and a quarter, and hours and 45 minutes, and all kind of crazy thing that's come from political issues, as in my country wants to be in this time earlier than yours, and uh, you, you just don't want to deal with it. You just want to use an open source library that will do it for you and just forget about it. But uh, a time zone is just uh, a region that, uh, where everyone in there follows the same standard time. I know this looks already complex, but well, we, we, we'll get into what kind of issues that come. And then the last concept I wanted to introduce before going into some code is time stands versus wall, uh, versus wall time. Uh, so there are two kind of times. Uh, a time stamp is just an absolute point in like the absolute line of time. Whilst the wall time, so for example, the time a star will have been born or the time a log was put into a file, something like that. Whilst wall time is more like, I'll meet you in two weeks at two o'clock. It's just a day and a time in a specific location. And those just follow kind of totally different rules to be more interesting, of course. Uh, so first of all, uh, just, uh, I'm, I'm going to give some facts and tips from uh, the experience I had. So uh, fact, uh, a time with as an offset cannot be mapped into a timestamp. Um, so if in Python uh, you have a daytime library, which is part of the standard and is great, uh, more or less, but uh, you have a method to, uh, which is called now, you can use it to generate an instance of the daytime and it's just returning the current time. If you just call it like this, it just, it, it's going to just give you a daytime without any kind of time zone. And that, you know, where is, the date, where is that date and time? You have no clue, right? That's, it's, I, want, I don't want to say it's ambiguous because ambiguous has all the notation on day and daytime, but it's like it's implicit the time zones. So you, you cannot get an absolute point of time out of this. Those times are, are referred in Python as naive daytimes, in opposed to uh, time zone aware uh, daytimes, which are the, the daytimes that have a time zone, that have a time zone attached to it. And Python, something I love from Python API is you cannot mix them, so if you compare them, you will get an exception. So the tip is just set the offset. Whenever, set the, set the, the offset so you get a time zone aware uh, data. When you call now, whenever you create the daytime, just remember to pass the time zone if you want an absolute point of t on time. And this will give you, again, the same date, but with the time zone on it. And it will respect the time zone that you pass. Because on the previous one, it was giving you uh, like the, tame, the time depending on whatever time zone your machine is configured, which I'm sorry you don't want, because you don't probably even know where your, time, where your machine is, right? And yeah. <laughs> so then when you see all this, you say, OK, I'll just you know, pass the time zone, and that's it. Then DST came. DST is this great idea we had uh, to save electricity many years ago, which is we will just uh, move our clocks forward in sprint and move them back in autumn with the idea of uh, it will look like the sunrise is later, but as well the, the sunset is later as well. So this will, save, uh, it will, this will save light because people will be more time awake on when there is light on the sky, right? And this might have been great at the time, but at the moment, they, it's, it has been uh, low. So everyone agrees that whether it's saving or actually costing money, it's only a 1% of the total money. And it comes with all kinds of hassles, like um, you know, all kinds of problems in software development, because you have to deal with this craziness of one location having two <coughs> different offsets. And as an interesting thing, because uh, because people will have less sleep the day the, moves, the clocks are moved. Uh, the, the Monday after the DST change is the, is the day with the highest peak of suicide. So why are we still doing this, right? Some countries are moving out of it, but well. So in fact, uh, a time zone can have more, more than one offset. You can see here, uh, we can get a time zone using the PyTZ model. And you can, you can get the, the time zone in, in Euro Brussels. This is using the Olsen database, which is available with PyTZ. It was the recommended library until 3.6. From 3.6, you should be using DateJitter. And here you can see uh, we pass a date in winter, 
and the um, the offset is plus one. This is Central European time, and this is uh, standard time. Whilst if you take the ta the a, a date which is in summer, if this is Central European summer time. The offset is plus two, and and you get day daylight saving time. This, like you know, if you think about all the problems that can come from here, if you're working with the, uh, with uh, with time zones that have uh, DST, it's, it's a Incredible. So my tip is just don't use them. Just use UTC. Whenever you can, just use UTC, and you'll be fine. I know it's a really bad tip if you have to use uh, uh, time zones because your clients are using time zones. So if you want to do that, I would uh, I would suggest you that you save as well the time zone and you just convert on the borders. It's like Unicode. You, you do this Unicode sandwich. So you would do I would do the same with uh, with the time zones. You can use both uh, PyTset or DateUtil. This is like this. You just call whenever you get. Whenever you get a daytime with UTC, all conversions are safe from that one. If you create the date with other ones, it's not that. Just use UTC. So whenever you have a date, an absolute point of time already, you can call it as time zone and pass a time zone, which you can get both with uh, date util or with pi set. And this is a safe conversion, and you will get a daytime uh, uh, for whatever time zone that you, you ask to pass. Next, you cannot map a future world time to a timestamp. Uh, it was like, come on, like we already saw timestamps. Uh, if I have a date and a time zone, why can I like why don't I get an absolute point of time, right? If I tell you meet you next Friday at two o'clock in Turkey, that's an absolute point that's an absolute point in time, right? Well it's not, because countries will change the time zones, countries will just decide to stop following DST and they will actually give really short advice of it. Last example was Turkey just deciding to stop uh, following DST, and yeah, this this can get really messy if you don't update your time zone database. This is a really important tip. Uh, you really need to update PyTset or DateUtil or whatever you are using, because otherwise it's gonna bite you back. You might be using a really old version of a time zone, and for some, I. I also an interesting thing. There was a country that changed time zones from uh, offset minus 12 to plus 12, and that meant that they missed a day in the year. So those poor people has one less day. Well, maybe they got paid the same salary and work one less day. Depends on how you see it, but yeah. And can you imagine like having to work with all kind of this weirdness? So just use a library that supports this. Don't write your own stuff for this. So after all this, painful thing. You just decide to send your daytime object, like your up beautiful absolute point in time, into a JSON payload. And guess what? JSON doesn't support doesn't support any kind of um, yeah JSON board, right? Isn't that JSON what it stands for? So uh, uh, JSON doesn't support daytimes. Oh, sorry, it doesn't it doesn't have any kind of way to to represent those. So you need to serialize them. Um, the best way to do it is use a standard, right? You just don't want to format it however you want. You might be thinking like, come on, we are Europeans, we think that a date is a, a day, month, year, hour, minute, second. But turns out that in the US they actually do month, day, year. I know it sounds crazy, but well, whatever. <laughs> and month, day, year, I, I promise it's true. Eh? <laughs> and uh, in Japan they do, they do it the other way, uh, right? they, they do a year, month, day. And, so just use a the standard. There is ISO 8601. It has re representation on strings for all kind of date and time related objects. And you know, you're using a standard. You can rely on that. You can tell other people, just use that instead of saying, you know, I like to format my dates however I want. If you don't like strings and you want to use integers, you can use, uh, you can use a, an epoch-based uh, representation. The idea is you will choose a date for example, for, uh, for Unix, the, the, uh, the epoch for Unix is 1970, and you start to count the seconds from them, so you just add one to the integer from, starting from that point. There are all kind of epochs, like <laughs> 1970, which is the most famous, is just for Unix. But that's also a way to serialize uh, an absolute point in time. By the way, Unix time just uh, is like UTC, but ignores the leap seconds. Uh, and so, Where's the, oh yeah, fact. Time arithmetic can be really ambiguous. When you say I want to add a day to a daytime, what do you mean? Do you mean you want 
the same time, but the next day? Do you want to add the number of seconds on the day? Because it's not the same, right? We saw we have things like uh, DST. And if you are here, you have some days that are 23 hours and some days that are 25. Because, because of the DST change, there is a point on the time where the clock goes back one hour, and there is another point of the time where the clock goes forward one hour. So the horrible tip I'm going to give you is just think about it like, uh, and validate your assumptions. Just test whatever you're doing. The image has nothing to do with what I'm saying. The, uh, just, uh, yeah, I guess I saw some faces like, it's a tennis ball doing that. So just uh, whenever you, uh, if you are sensible to this kind of things, like DST changes, because you're not using UTC, because you're not using the previous tea I gave you, which you shouldn't, <laughs> um, then be, be aware that if you are doing arithmetics on, on, on day times that are half time zones that follow DST, uh, you might have, you're gonna have issues because they might not behave as, as you think about them. And if you're using Python, which is even worse when dealing with that, Datutil fixes that. If you're using Python, said you need to call local, uh, normalize after doing all kind of arithmetics. So reviewing the tips, um, be aware of the different standards of time and know which one you are actually thinking about. What I mean is like you might be thinking on like um, astronomical times that you might be using UTC and that's going to leave this going to lead to some issues. Use fixed uh, offset time zones if possible, ideally UTC, 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 that's what you get from this talk, UTC. Um, use as time zones to convert to user time zones uh, on borders. Uh, keep your time zone database updated, whether you're using PyTC or DateUtil. Uh, use ISO formatting for when, if you need to uh, send your date time as a string. Arithmetical operation can be tricky, so watch out. And remember that future world times cannot be mapped into a timestamp. Uh, some libraries worth mentioning. PyTSet, just the awesome database. They do a lot of cool things and proper uh, time zone support. Uh, from, actually, from starting from Python 3.6 with the addition of the is folder attribute. Uh, really interesting if you want to read about it. Uh, they recommend the library to deal with time zone is they do to see. Uh, Aaron Pendulum are just dropping replacement for daytime, and AstroPy is great to deal with uh, leap seconds, and FreeScan, this is the library that's going to save your life because it allows you to test with times. You can say, I want to my test to behave as in it's this day or any specific day. It's, it, it will allow you to validate that your software behaves as you, as you expect when you have all this kind of awareness with time. So now we're going to see some code samples, and you have to, uh, there is a camera in the room which is rendering live if you are right or not. And uh, if you think the code sample is good, you, you put your uh, right hand up. If it's bad, you put your left hand back, uh, your left hand up. And there is a camera that will give us the result in lifetime. Hmm. So first of all, we just get the current daytime, right? We just want a timestamp uh, for our logs, and we call daytime. Hands up. Exactly, 95. 0.3% uh, of the people know this is wrong. We have to use UTC. So we have to pass UTC to daytime now. Because otherwise, your log will start to, you'll start to see weird things in the logs, like time going forward and then going one hour back. And you don't want that, right? You want an absolute point of time. Next one. There's not much you can do here, but uh, do you think it's, there's going to be any problem with this? So you, you have a time zone, you get a terminal client, and then you localize whatever naive daytime you had. So hands up, right, left. Wow, so many people participating in this. And <laughs> wow, it's great. This is because of the beer, what? So yeah, it's still the people that answer, most of them are right. This, ha this is gonna cause you problems because when you localize a naive daytime with a time zone, uh, it, this, this function has a beautiful parameter called isdsd, which will tell you whether you are in the is fold or not like whether you, you know, whenever you are in these specific situations where you can have, uh, you have ambiguous uh, times where you, there are some times that appear twice because of the going forward and going backward of the hour, this will just silently give you one of the two and you don't even know which one. You can pass uh, here uh, is DST equals none and this is gonna throw an exception in that situation. Next one, well, I'm really bad on time, so I'm gonna skip this one. You can, it's bad because the, the UTC again, right? And also because 
Here, we are relying on the time being monotonic and ascending, and that's not always true. All of you are right, even if you didn't answer. Uh, what about this one? We want to send the time to, to a client, and we decide, like, hey, I'm going to format it with this really cool format, because it's what I learned at school. So the times are going to look like this. Who thinks this is good? All right, come on. Cool. Cool, you're getting better, eh? 99.3%. Yeah, we use CISO format, right? We want to use the standards. We don't want to just, come on, think about the poor guy that's going to parse that. <laughs> so you just, you just use CISO format, and whenever you, whenever you, you parse it, you can use something like um, dateutil.parse. There is no, or you can just use, in daytime, you can use strp time to, to, to parse that. Uh, last one, really quick, because I'm out of time. Um, you want to get the total number of seconds. This one is really tricky, but I know you are really good with daytimes already. So you want to get the total number of seconds on three years, and you're going to bet your salary on this. Is this good or bad? Come on, it's bad, it's bad. Great, exactly. 101% of the people got this right. That's new record. Why is this bad? Because uh, um, Python doesn't deal with uh, leap seconds, so this won't take into account the leap seconds. You know, for m most of you, Use cases, it might be fine, but again, you just have to be aware of this kind of issues that you might face. In total, it's 99.999% of, that's great, that's great. You're an expert on, on daytime. So, well, I hope you, you got the, be careful with daytimes. If you're just a normal user of daytime, just stick UTC and forget about all the problems. You have really time sensitive uh, applications, just, do some research because it's, it's really tricky. And last but not least, uh, don't worry, this is not one of those slides where I'm saying like, come to have a coffee to our company, I will recruit you and everything. No, no, this is just, uh, so I'm, I'm a member of the organization of the PyCon Spain this year. It's uh, a hundred of people come in, awesome city, awesome food. It's amazing, right? So beautiful, that, that's what I studied. And uh, we really want you to welcome you, especially if you speak Spanish. If you don't, you're welcome, but you, you, we might have a tracking list, check the schedule. If you're a sponsor, though, you should really have to look into it because 20% uh, of the people are unemployed in Spain. This is perfect environment for recruiting. <laughs> that said, uh, if you want to have to, a coffee uh, on our... Uh, <laughs> please come and we can speak about a lot of things like recruiting and all of that. That's all. Uh, I have some more material if you don't ask any questions. And if you ask a question I don't know the answer, my uh, guinea pig will attack you on the, uh, this night. <laughs> no questions? Oh. I have a question. Um, do, how should we calculate the number of seconds uh, with the leap seconds? Yeah, so. If you want to take into account leap seconds when you're computing, for example, the total number of seconds, I guess it's because your use case will probably be something astronomical or something like that. You should really have a look into AstroPy, because that's a library that ha has support for leap seconds, and that would be the, the right way to do it. If, if, that said, if you, when you're doing operations like, I want to see how many seconds between two dates, that, and you are not that much concerned about the accuracy of it, you can just go with data. But for really accurate things, you should really go with it. They don't, they, like, they, you, you, we don't know the next five years leap seconds, like it's like the UTC just deciding, hey, leap second this year, one second more for you, so there's no way to know it. Yeah, so that's, that's really interesting. It's, it happens as well. In, uh, I'm not sure about date util. Uh, you can ask Paul, which works. Uh, Paul Gans is the main maintainer of date util. He works in Bloomberg. More promotion here coming. Uh, but yeah, it, it's an issue because, for example, date time doesn't go farther than I think 9,900 blah, blah blah. So you would have to AstroPy again has support for really long, uh, really past dates. So you can have a look to AstroPy. Yeah. Especially around 
Yeah, so uh, you, 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 date util has a parser, which will try to infer the format. So you can just pass any date to, to it, uh, sort of like any string to it, and it will tell you, it will give you back a date time. Uh, you want to use that only if you really don't know the format, because it's, because it tries to infer. It's, it's, uh, I'm saying it because there's people sending millions of dates to it and complaining about being slow, and um, Paul hates that because it, it really tries to infer it. So if you, if you know the format or you have a guess of two or three formats, you can pass to the UT like, hey, those are the two or three formats I think they are. Otherwise, you can tell him like, you know, I have no idea what it is. Just give me back a day time and it will do the best, a best effort. You, you really need to do the format otherwise. I have more content if you don't ask questions. How are we doing this time? Is, is time for? Okay, cool. So on the slides, there is uh, something about what's the difference with UTC and GMT. You can check it. And what's even more interesting is how does the, you know, because we saw all these time standards, but how does the computer work, right? Because, like, this has a different clock. This is not a session clock. I don't know how session smells, but there's not a session clock here. So there's a protocol called NTP, which is really interesting if you like uh, this old daytime craziness. Have a look to NTP. It's really, really interesting. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much.
Yeah, that's good.